So you know that if you have a pure solvent and you put a lid on top of it, like a beaker, and you put a lid on top of that, that beaker, that solvent right there, near the solvent molecules there, are going to be able to evaporate in the space above it until they reach a certain pressure at a given temperature where they start to return into solution and they keep a constant pressure above that liquid and we call that the vapor pressure of that solvent. Now what happens to that vapor pressure when we add a solute? When we talked about that before, when we did, uh, talked about boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. In that, we get, when we get solute molecules that are introduced, a blocking effect occurs for the evaporation of the solvent and so therefore the vapor pressure goes down. Now, if I said to you that in terms of the number of moles, we actually added enough moles of this solute that it occupied 30% of the total of the um, solution in terms of its mole fraction, or we'll just say 0.3 of a mole fraction, right? Then what happens to the vapor pressure? Well, if the particles occupy 30% of this, then 70% of this is still solvent. And so actually, up here, in terms of the vapor pressure, you're going to get 70% of the vapor pressure that you once had before. And so therefore, instead of 10 molecules being up there, we now have 7 molecules up there. And the adjustment to the vapor pressure is this, Routes Law, which is the pressure of the solution, the new solution, equals what the original pressure of the solvent was, let's pretend it was 10 in this case, right? Because it was 10 little circles up here. 10 tor, right? Times the chi or the mole fraction of the solvent. Not the mole fraction of the solute, but of the solvent. And remember, the mole fraction that I just gave you of the solvent here was that, that there was a 7 molecules of solvent for every 10 total that was here, 70% of it was going to be, 70% was going to be still solvent. 70% of 10 is 7, and 7 becomes the new pressure of the solution. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that's what, what, how you operate Ralph's Law. Um, now, uh, just, to, just to tell you, because these can be the more complex calculations involving Ralph's Law, what if both of these chemicals, the solute and the solvent, are liquids? So the solute isn't a solid get in the way of getting in the way of the evaporation of the solvent. But if the solute is a liquid, it also vaporizes into this space, does it not? And so therefore, how do you actually take that evaporation in consideration and what is the new pressure above the solution? Well, look. All you do, quite simply, is this. If you know Raoult's formula here, you know that this calculation here is the calculation for the pressure, the new pressure, of the solvent when you mix a solute with it. Well, you know what? One is no longer the solute and one is the solvent, so much as one is like, and they are really, but one is like solution A and solution B. And so if both of them evaporate, you just take what their pressures are normally, the pressure of solution A normally, and multiply by its new mole fraction now in solution with B included in that, if you have to know the moles of A and the moles of B, and then you just add that, because Dalton's law of partial pressures, remember, says you just add one pressure to another. So you add the pressure of whatever B is as it just as a solvent itself, when it's its own solvent, take its pressure and then multiply it by the mole fraction now of B, which is going to be the moles of B divided by the moles of A plus B, just as this is the moles, the mole fraction of A is really the moles of A divided by the total moles, which is the moles of A plus B. And that's how you do Raoult's law uh, when you have two liquids. But by the way, things can get really complicated too if when you mix these liquids together they don't behave properly or ideally. This is only if you have ideal solution. If the molecules actually mix together and they really hate each other 
and they actually improve the vaporization of each other, that's what you call a positive deviation from Raoult's law. And if these molecules actually come into contact with one another and they like each other and bond closer to each other and prevent each other from evaporating, well then what you have then is a negative deviation from Raoult's law where you're not going to get as many molecules forming uh, a certain pressure above the solution. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. That's at an advanced level.